Howdy y'all, got the Bulldog on the channel. Oh, winter has returned. It was 60 degrees yesterday. It's below freezing now. I am gonna go out here and grab, well not grab, I'm going to fire up this little mid turd beachy. The customer was really vague on the phone as to what exactly was wrong with this thing or what was supposed to be wrong with it. I gathered it was supposed to not start. We were very surprised when I got in it and it fired right up. Oh, oh, oh. Now I talked to him on the phone yesterday. This was something that came in last month. Yeah, fired right up. This is something that came in last month and told him we weren't gonna be able to get to it after, until after the first of the year. It's fine. Well, it came in on a hook. And like I say, everybody was really vague about what exactly was wrong with it. I just assumed it didn't start. Well, we were trying to get everything out from in front of the shop. We don't want any activity out there because that attracts passers-by that have ill intent. So we keep it clean out front and people don't even think this is a shop. Well, this thing fired up but it has no forward gears. It has reverse. So I assumed, well, that's what's wrong. They couldn't drive it forward, so they had it towed in. She says, oh, it's normal. What? No, it's not. Well, no, that's normal. You have to let it warm up quite a bit before it'll go forward. Really? Uh, I came out back here, so... We can fire it up and let it warm up and see if it will actually engage forward gears. The shifter doesn't feel right. She said this has been an ongoing problem. So we'll figure it out. All right, let's sit there and run for five, 10 minutes. And it went right into forward gears. So well, that means we got a valve sticking or something wrong inside the transmission but she insists that that's normal. So we're gonna look elsewhere. While it was sitting there running, I had the hood up, check the antifreeze, make sure it you know, wasn't empty or anything like that. And I could hear around the top of the motor, you know, fire flying everywhere. So probably what killed it was while it's hot, it's got a coil or something jumping outside to the point that it just died. So we're gonna go that route. I'm gonna pull off the cover and see what we see. Okay, I've got a working theory of what happened here. The day that this thing came in, it was gloomy and overcast and everything. So the defroster was on. Now, one of the things that we noticed, my boss messed around with the controls up there, is that when you turn the AC on, the engine almost died. It went, tried to die. Well, <clears throat> you remember we were looking at this because this is the wrong pulley. I think it's the right compressor, but I'm not sure. This was installed a year ago or a year and a half ago or something like that. We didn't get that job because we're too much. Yeah. Well, anyway, look here. This clutch here is just, yeah. Blown to pieces, junk. Now, ah, compressor's locked up. So, if they start it up, second after you start it up, it engages that AC clutch. And that can kill the motor. Not the first time we've run into that before. I've run into locked up alternators, locked up AC pumps that will kill the engine on a little four cylinder. That might be why it was here to begin with. We were trying to figure out whether we were gonna get a clutch for this thing since the pump was new. It was pumps, obviously a, a, an internet special. Well, it's, uh, 
junk. She was telling me she spent hundreds of dollars getting that put on there, and she was mad because now it, it ruined her belt. We put that belt on there, and it's going to turn to turn to confetti here in a minute, but she's going to spend all that money again, plus flushing out the whole system, plus changing a condenser. You see how the condenser is running in parallel. It has one pipe and then it flows across to another pipe. Well, if one of these deals gets plugged up with debris from a blown up condenser, or a blown up compressor, I mean, then it just won't pass any fluid. You flush it and you're just gonna flush straight across through the ones that will flow. The ones that won't flow, won't flow. I've run to that before where air conditioner won't work. It was around the time where we were getting more tools. And I actually found the problem the old school way. But to drive that point home, I went and got the uh, heat Im uh, thermal imaging gun. We could just sit there and watch it. And there was a blue streak across the condenser where it had two or three cores plugged up on it. And the pressure kept going way too high on the AC. Low side was way too low and it wasn't cooling. Well, it wasn't exchanging the heat off of the condenser because it was plugged up. So it's a lot easier, handier, grab that gun, but I could feel the difference with my hand. So there's a reason why the money grubbing high dollar shop charges a lot of money for stuff. It's so that you have reputable parts. It's really difficult for us to get reputable parts anymore because uh, it's so easy to go get cheap parts online that the reputable parts suppliers do that too. They do the lowest bidder when it comes to supplying their own parts and at the parts store half the time it's junk. So we're gonna run up an estimate. It's gonna be high. She's probably not gonna do it. We'll be out of job. She's gonna be out of AC. But the guy that put that pump on, he made money. There's a reason that we want don't want to get stuff online. Certain things are fine. And other things, don't touch them. Unfortunately, that was as far as I went on that car there. It went away. Like I said, I lost the job. I don't know what the customer is doing. At least she can drive the car. Well, I think I unplugged the pump. But the bearings locked up in it. And eventually, it's going to rip the belt off of it again. It's something we deal with on a daily basis. Beware of internet parts and beware of the people that installed them for you that might not tell you that it's a piece of junk. And whenever somebody says, I won't use those parts that you get online, hopefully they explain to you why they won't use them. Because some of them are junk. Some of them are the same that you get in the parts store. But some of them are absolute junk and will not work. It's something to remember when you're comparing prices and you get online and you check that part and, oh my gosh, they're wanting to charge me $500, but I can get it online here for $79.99. You can spend the money and you, or you could throw it in a pot and light it on fire. Same thing. Beware. Like, comment, subscribe, hit your little bell notification, share it all around. We'll talk to you later.